Hello, I'm going to give a poetry reading and analysis of this poem by, written by Owen Shears called Mammoth's Wood. I'm first of all going to give you a little bit of background behind what war we're discussing um, and exactly what happened. Then I'm going to move into Shears' own personal views upon the poem and his intentions for writing this. Then I'm going to talk you through step by step into what is going on in each stanza and then I'm going to draw your attention to some key moments and key words and writers techniques. So the first thing to address then is understanding the background of the poem. So this is talking specifically about an attack uh, which took place in a wood Mammoth's Wood in particular, which is centred in northern France, and it was in the First World War. So the date, to be exact, um, was the 2nd of July 1916, and so this was two years into the First World War itself, um, and this was seen to be a really brutal yet important event in the in the First World War sort of calendar of, of, of events, really. Um, and in particular, it was one of the most major battles which was experienced by Welsh soldiers in particular. So the fight then um, occurred between what's known as a 38th Division, who were the Welsh soldiers fighting against the Germans. But as they were, att were attacking um, and instructed to walk rather than run by their military leaders, they were met with explosive gunfire machine gun fire in, in particular, from the German soldiers. So they didn't stand a chance at all. And as a result, the, re the remnants of their bodies still exist in this wood. So Shears is reflecting on this poem um, by considering the 3,993 people that were killed and injured. And in particular, he makes note about just how young these soldiers were and how important it is for their memories to be to be held alive still by us and for us to respect the sacrifice that they went to. So in terms of Owen Shears' own intentions for the poem, he discusses how pointless war really is. Um, a word to highlight this is futile, also known as, um, we could say futility, so the futility of war and the absolute violence of war. He reflects upon how war is very wasteful and is just a way to kind of mow down as many lives and, um, you know, innocent lives as possible, particularly as he reflects on how lots of young men were forced to fight and you know in some regard they, they were still children they hadn't even experienced life properly he also suggests that the war is very selfish and there is a key clue to who are the winners of war and who are the one who are the losers and the losers are being anyone innocent that's been forced to sacrifice their own, own lives but the final thought of the poem is this idea that time has a way of healing the past, not, not in, in a sense of forgetting what's happened, but a way that we need to move on from this, but in a way that's healthy by ref always thinking back to what has happened and making sure that this doesn't happen again. So therefore, the soldiers are mentioned in a very delicate way um, as he really wants us to remember them. So I'm now gonna give a reading of the poem, um, just so you can read along um, as I speak it. So, for years afterwards, the farmers found them, the wasted young, turning up under their plough blades as they tended the land back into itself. A chit of bone, the china plate of a soldier blade, sorry, shoulder blade, the relic of a finger, the blown and broken bird's egg of a skull, all mimicked now in flint, breaking blue and white across this field where they were told to walk, not run, towards the wood and its nesting machine guns. And even now, the earth stands sentinel, reaching back into itself for reminders of what happened. 
like a wound working on a foreign body to the surface of the skin. This morning, 20 men buried in one long grave, a broken mosaic of bone linked arm in arm, their skeletons pause mid-dance macabre, in boots that outlasted them, their socketed heads tilted back at an angle, and their jaws, those that have them, dropped open. As if the notes they had sung have only now with this unearthing slipped from their absent tongues. So the poem begins with farmers ploughing the fields and as they're ploughing the, the fields they're noticing that it's bringing up the remnants of these soldiers' bodies. And as the, the machinery is ploughing it, the things that are coming up are, as we can see listed here, a chit of bone, the china plate of a shoulder blade, the relic of a finger, um, and a skull which almost looks like a broken bird's egg. So it's quite a gruesome and dark image of, of as the machinery is ploughing through, these are the things that are being tossed up as it's doing that. Um, and then as we progress with the poem, we begin to find out a little bit more about what the attack involved and how these men were, were carrying, well, how they were being told to carry out their duties um, against the nesting machine guns. But despite that, the poet Shears suggests that the earth still remembers them. The earth stands sentinel, so it's kind of guarding these men who lost their lives um, and that their bodies are coming up like a wound working a foreign body to the surface of the skin. So this idea that um, if this sort of foreign body in in the human body is, is surfacing then it's effectively being able to heal so it's almost like we need to churn up the past address it take it on board if we are to move on from it and as we get to the ending of the poem we reflect on the fact that these men will always be remembered together as a collective, you know, they've, they've never been left alone and therefore their memory is always going to be held by us as we address the sacrifice and understand exactly what they went through. Um, and then as we approach the close or the denouement of the poem, we notice that these soldiers are in sort of a, a dark sense. They're the ones that are now speaking. They're the ones that are now singing as though that they finally have a voice now that they're being noticed. So things to take um, attention towards. The farmers found them. So rather than, you know, the farmers dug them up and noticed that all their bodies lying there, he, they found them. So it's this idea that we're, we're restoring the past. It's, and then we had that dash there, which I've highlighted. And you may remember that when we have interrupted lines, it's what is known to, as um, caesura. So what that means is that it's a, it's a moment uh, where the poem has stopped and it, it sometimes feels quite jarring or quite abrupt. So what I want us to think about now is well, exactly why that dash is there. For me, I'm considering that that dash is there so that I am forced to really stop and now think, because I'm now thinking about, well, well, who, who's the farmer just found? And actually a moment of my own consideration and respect to the wasted young who have lost their lives. Now, as I said before, Shears really makes note of the fact that so many young people, um, these young soldiers lost their lives. He never refers to the fact that they were experienced in war. They are always seen to be vulnerable always seem to be unprepared as well. Now the imagery here is interesting. So I'm noticing, yeah, so the chit of bone, a china plate and a skull. So this idea that the imagery is always connected with things that are very fragile, things that are easily broken. So it's also suggesting how delicate these soldiers are and, and the memory of them is. And if you think about a china plate, they can also be very priceless. So there's kind of any value on these plates. So this idea that even the soldiers' lives 
a price this as well you, you can't put a price on a person's life who have you know despite the fact that they have been entirely wiped off i'm also interested by this word relic now the word relic often has religious connotations to it so it's suggesting that even their fingers are these sort of special and and godly as well and that they also need to be remembered in this sort of um, sacrificial way as though they are sort of a myth in themselves you may remember um so we have the alliteration here um of with that repeated b consonant um so we can refer to that as being a plosive b sound so a plosive sound is anything that any consonant um, with associated with a p a b or a d and the reason for that is because it's almost it's almost quite aggressive the way that those um those letters are spoken so it could kind of be taking us back to the battlefields and that relentless machine gun motion where it was like firing at all of these soldiers so once again showing the the, the awful circumstances that these um that these men went through and we also have references here to to the body so um, and in particular the bones of the body so the very core foundations and the things that are left behind such as the skull such as the skeletons here which once again shows that whilst most of their bodies has been sort of worn away the very fundamental structure of the body still exists and the bones are still there so once again showing almost this haunting sense in the poem as though these these bodies are not going to go anywhere anytime soon and therefore we need to address it and remember it but also emphasizing how fragile again these men are now this is interesting as well in, in my research so the instructions according to what i've been reading from some of the military leaders to the welsh soldiers were that they were told to walk not run and actually it made them become prime targets um, for the german machine guns because they weren't darting in and around the forest that they were literally walking so therefore they were not in any way prepared to to respond to this or to deal with it so many many numbers obviously lost their lives as i've mentioned but despite that um Oh, well, one thing to note as well is I, I noticed before that we we've got this um, full stop here, so that might be a way of kind of really emphasising that loss of life. It's finished. It's done. We we'll move on to a new chapter. So even now, the earth stands sentinel. So the word sentinel um, is suggestive of almost like soldiers standing there and guarding. Um, so the earth has been personified here, as I said before, as, as though it's this sort of um, this important site. It's almost like it's its very own graveyard to pay respect and tribute to these soldiers. We have a simile here, which I've already addressed from before. So this idea that the memory is resurfacing now and we're addressing it and 20 men buried in one long grave their skeletons poor. So if we look at um, the, the subject here, we're not talking about one individual soldier, are we? We're talking about many. So this idea that even in their death, they are, they're not alone, they're together in that. And the word macabre there actually stands for um, a, a fear of the death. So once again we've got these repeated imagery back to um, this sense of fear and haunting from this moment which kind of coincides back to Shears's main belief about how pointless and how bloody and wasteful war really is now this is interesting in boots that outlasted them now everyone from any notes that I've read in archives noted how the boots that soldiers were expected to wear were useless. They did not stand up to 
to the, the job in hand. And actually, so it's ironic there that the boots, which we know would have kind of been ruined so easily, have outlasted them, which really shows how they didn't stand any chance whatsoever against the machine guns that were aimed at them. Once again, we're going back to the body now, so the socketed heads, the jaws. So once again, that sense of haunting that I've already mentioned with the skeletons, but also the fact that there are still parts of the body that, that remain and remind us. And as we come on to this final stanza, um, where when it's mentioned that these, these dead soldiers are beginning to communicate. So in the sense that despite everything that they went through, if they don't want to have died in vain, they want their voices to be remembered and to remind us that nothing like this should ever happen again. Mm -hmm.